The creation of NUHS, I think, is one of the greatest potentials as a platform. Because in NUHS, you have the whole ecosystem. We're one of the world's best universities. We have one of the world's best healthcare systems. How can we get together to develop solutions for Singapore's problems? Because Singapore's challenges are actually shared by many, many countries in the world. If we can develop solutions here, I'm pretty confident that the world will be very interested. Increasingly, we realize that to solve uh, complex human disease, we need to engage and involve other areas of expertise beyond just medical expertise. The fact that we can bring in the multidisciplinary research to integrate the clinicians with the scientists is also a particularly exciting prospect that is not easily reproducible in many, many settings. But now, I think we have a unique opportunity with the formation of NUHS and the integration of all these elements together to really start to look into making a greater impact on human health and on our patients. I see children with leukemias and I was always very intrigued in terms of why certain children respond to therapy while certain children don't. Prof. Dario Campana designed a treatment we call CAR T-cell where he can reprogram the patient's immunity to fight leukemia. So with that, I managed to work with Dario to actually try to take patient cells to fight cancer in those that will not respond to chemotherapy. Conventional chemotherapy involves a lot of drugs used, killing dividing cells. CAR T immunotherapy is very precise. It is therapy where you can actually target and destroy the enemy with less harm for the body. We had nine or ten patients to whom we couldn't offer any other type of therapy. They had very advanced disease and there was absolutely nothing else that could be done. And the results were just fantastic. You had patients with leukemia, they were incurable with existing treatment that became cured after infusing immune cells, taken from themselves, put in the lab, modified and put them back into patients. Now with this CAR-T therapy, I'm able to really change the future of these 10% of these children that would otherwise have died. How we can find cancers earlier has been a long-term problem. Over the years, we tried a variety of approaches. So this field is called biomarker research. We're trying to find signs, signals, tests that can be used to detect the cancer. I was explaining this problem to one of my colleagues, Professor Tu Heng Fong from the Department of Biochemistry. And he described that he was working on a new technology called microRNAs. The test is called GastroClear. It detects levels of microRNA in the blood and gives you a result that would tell us whether the person has a high risk or low risk of having stomach cancer. This is the first time a blood test can detect stomach cancer. So globally, about 1 million people die of stomach cancer each year. If we estimate that the test could perhaps detect the stomach cancer early in say one-third of these people, then you would each year save about 250,000 people. Diabetic kidney disease is the leading cause of kidney failure in Singapore. It contributes to nearly two-thirds of the end-stage kidney failure that we see in the country. NEMO was a program that we instituted in 2011 to help manage diabetic kidney disease at its earliest stages. And we saw that there was a 35% reduction in kidney failure events or kidney deterioration over a two-year period. We're very pleased to see that our program has gone national and now almost every diabetic in all the polyclinics is involved in a similar program. And I think that's a true measure of the success of any research, to be able to translate it from its initial pilot programs to go national.
GUSTO is the acronym for Growing Up in Singapore Towards Healthy Outcomes. It's a study that we started about 10 years ago where we recruited about 1,200 mothers in the first 12 weeks of their pregnancy and we've been following the mothers and their babies up ever since then. And these studies have yielded amazing results. We found that at four years of life, the babies whose mothers were more stressed in pregnancy, that their babies' brains developed less well and they were less ready for school compared to children whose mothers had a relatively smooth pregnancy. Another interesting thing about this was the mothers. We found that almost 20% of them had gestational diabetes in pregnancy. This was double the rate that we were expecting. And because of this, we quickly recommended to the Ministry of Health that they should just test everybody who was pregnant. And within 17 months, the Singapore government responded very quickly and they changed the policy. It shows you how well connected the science that we do in Singapore is to the policy makers. And we are now hoping to again influence how early childhood development is nurtured by taking care of mothers better and also advising parents how to bring up their children. Our goal, of course, is to try to derive as much value as we can from our research in terms of healthcare, improvements in population health, and also economic value creation. And to do that, we also need to build a wider ecosystem that encompasses startups, support for startups, collaborations with companies, and the ability of small companies to grow larger. We want to be able to help interesting new methods, technologies and treatments to be able to grow or be tested, evaluated in the healthcare system and if found to be effective, to be adopted within the wider healthcare system. My name is Matthew Cheng and I specialize in biological engineering, which aims to give the living cells new functions. Willemar is one of the largest oleochemicals manufacturer and one of the largest food ingredients companies in the world. And NUS is one of the leading the research intensive universities centered in Asia. So Willemar at NUS uh, focuses on two the research themes. The first research theme is centered on the making food next generation medicines. So we actually hope to make the food that actually we eat on a daily basis healthier so that we can actually bring a very tangible benefits to the public of Singapore. The second research theme is really focused on the making industrial enzymes and chemicals more sustainably. As of today, Wilmar um, NUS Cooper Laboratory houses about 100 researchers. Therefore, the way that we do collaboration can be extremely efficient and also effective. Alzheimer's disease is a major form of neurodegenerative disease and a major cause of dementia. Affected patients typically show a progressive decline of cognitive as well as physical functions. But long before these physical symptoms actually appear, there are these tiny molecular changes that can happen in the brain. And what we aim to do is to be able to detect these early molecular changes of the brain from a drop of blood, from a blood test. APEX stands for Amplified Plasmonic Exosome Detection Platform, which is based on nanosensors. And we hope to use this technology for early detection of Alzheimer's through a blood test. And with this array of sensors, we were able to achieve a very high detection sensitivity to measure even trace amount of these protein changes directly from blood. It has a performance which is over 10,000 fold better than what's clinically currently available. It is definitely scalable and we hope to bring this technology to more patients so that more patients are able to benefit from this innovation.
I think AI is set to transform healthcare like it has transformed what we take for granted in the past, things like banking and shopping. We can see so many advantages of using AI to help doctors make better decisions, to help us streamline our processes and to hopefully reduce the cost and deliver the same level of care uh, to our patients. So at NUHS, we've done this through a platform called Discovery AI. And this platform has allowed us to, for the first time, gather clinical research, genomic data, administrative data, all in one place. One of the first tools that we developed is this tool called Augurum. It is a free text diagnosis tool. To explain what that is, a doctor takes a history from the patient, gets their symptoms and enters it into the computer and the machine will then run and be able to give a prediction of what disease this patient potentially might have. It's a suggestion to the doctor. The second tool looks at readmissions prediction. It processes and predicts what's the risk of this patient being readmitted 30 days later. The third tool is what we call a chronic disease progression model predictor to predict the progression of kidney disease. The problems Singapore is trying to deal with are very complex. And so when you have a very complex problem, you need everyone to work together to come up with that solution. And the only way that we can do this is to really develop everyone to their optimal potential because so many different people are required in health or healthcare. I think NUHS wants firstly to be the best possible organization to address Singapore's problems. I think our main focus is to really make sure that we can create a better Singapore. And if our efforts in building a better Singapore helps in building a better region, fantastic. And if the world appreciates what we do, even better.